Hello and welcome friends of our homestead. In this week's video I like to introduce you one of my old new new old projects. I'm so happy that I could finish it this week. It took more than a year to build it because of there were a lot of projects in between, which you can see in all of our other YouTube videos. And it took a long time to find all the parts I need for that project and to assemble it together. I would like to show you the beginning of this project, but because of I had a hard disk crash, so I lost a lot of videos that I made when I start building that. I can only show you what I have. So let us do that and get into that project. That's a roller chain I need for that project. It's too long. So I marked the link with a paint marker where I have to divide it and I use that chain divider to make that chain shorter. That's a tool you should definitely have if you work a lot with roller chains. It's simple and it fits different sizes of roller chains. I mean, you can definitely do it with a grinder and with a, uh, with a punch, but it's definitely easier if you use these divider and if you are interested in it I put the link for you in the description down below you can find it on Amazon You should make sure that the close end of that connectors always shows in the working direction of the roller chain. So if it turns to the right, make sure the close end is at the right end. Finding the right spot for the roller chain tightener is sometimes not so easy. Your center punch should be very pointed at the end, which this is not anymore. So I put it in the battery drill, tightened it up, and used the band sander to make it pointy again. I have to be careful in that case, I don't want that the pointy end gets too hot or starts to glow because of it gets too hot, it gets soft So and it don't work as a sander punch anymore. And I make another one pointy again. For the support of the hydraulic motor I need two pieces of square tubing. I used used one but uh, the used one had a couple holes that I closed with the welder because of I don't need that holes anymore.
Then I cleaned them up with an angle grinder and a flat disc. Sometimes it doesn't work like it should, but we get it done. After I put at least 5 coats of paint on it, that's the finished frame. Rust protection is everything if you want that it lasts long. 
especially here where we live, everything gets faster, rusty, then you can weld it together. If you like our videos and what we do, please subscribe for our YouTube channel, hit only the button in the lower right corner, it costs you nothing, hurts nobody and really helps us a lot. And we post every Sunday a new video here on our YouTube channel. If you want to be up to date, don't forget to hit the notification bell. For the conveyor I used type 60H roller chain and 10mm rebar. It was a lot of welding to put these parts together. Here on the workbench you can see two little knobs. The two little knobs are to make sure the two pieces of roller chains are absolute parallel if you weld it together. The sprockets on the shaft should have on both ends the same distance to the end of the shaft. I tack and weld the sprockets to the shaft. I mounted the bearings to the mainframe And that's how to put the drive shaft together. Mm -hmm. 
I marked where the keyways have to be for the conveyor sprockets and the sprocket keyway for the drive. And I used the milling machine to make the three keyways into the drive shaft. Back on the workbench I cleaned the keyways and I assembled the shaft and the sprockets together. I made the keys from Keystock. And I weld the sprockets to the hubs. Rust protection is everything. And then I mounted the conveyor chain. Or better, I try. Whenever I build the tractor attachment for my little tractor, I always put the quick couplers direct on the attachment because I want to use only one set of hoses, not for every machine hoses again. So that's for me the simplest and easy way to save material and money.
And I always use a male and a female so I can't confuse it. And now it's ready for the first test run. Let me introduce you our brand new homemade potato digger backslash rock picker. It's hydraulic driven so I don't need a PDO. The speed of the conveyor is adjustable. Also the height of the wheels. Perfect! If this video will like to reach the thousand subscriber, please subscribe for our channel if you have not already done it. So that's it for this week's video, thanks guys for watching it, if you like to support us a little you can buy us a coffee, I put the link for you in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumb up for us, hit the notification bell and we see us next week again.